Welcome to the tutorial about the configuration of the safety functions. This tutorial shows how to configure the safety functions SafeStop2 and Safe Operating Stop by using the FlexiSoft Motion Control module Mach 1. At the end of the video you get a short review about the biggest differences between SafeStop1 and SafeStop2. The SafeStop2 generates a safe and fast stopping of the drive system. Different to the safety function SafeStop1, the SafeStop2 keeps the torque enabled, although the standstill is monitored. The safety function SafeStop2 is also performed in the function block SafeStop in the Mach 1 logic. So let's switch to the logic editor of the Mach 1, where I've already placed the function block SafeStop with the DFS safety encoder, like in the tutorial before. To reach the configuration menu, you have to double click on the function block. If you need more information about the in and outputs or the configuration of the tabs, units and stop ramps, you can take a look on the last tutorial. So let's jump to the tab stop types. Here you can activate up to two additional inputs, save stop 2A and save stop 2B. With the help of the following graphic, I will explain the safety function SafeStop2. Here you can see the movement of the drive as well as a defined stop ramp. When there is a low signal on the input SafeStop2, then the safety function SafeStop2 is triggered. Now the output ramp active goes high and the configured delay time until start of the ramp begins. After that, the speed of the drive is decelerated by the machine control and constantly compared with the current speed limit of the stop ramp. After finalizing the stop ramp and reaching standstill speed, the safety function safe operating stop is activated. Now the power to the drive remains on and the speed and position of the drive is monitored permanently. For that reason, the outputs amplifier of enable brake and enable torque are staying high. This enables the drive to perform holding control. Let's go further to the next tab, standstill monitoring. After defining the standstill speed, we have the possibility to activate the standstill position tolerance window. Here we can define which relative position change still counts as a standstill during standstill monitoring. Let's have a closer look at the relevant graphic. In addition to the movement function and the defined stop ramp, we can see the relative position of the drive. When the drive reaches standstill speed, then the defined position tolerance window opens. Now the relative position of the drive is monitored permanently. In this limited window, the drive is allowed to move and it still counts as a standstill. But remember, if the drive is exceeding the limits of the window, then the torque is cut off immediately. The optional setting maximum distance for speed filter defines the distance that the drive is allowed to move despite exceeding the maximum permitted speed. This function is explained in the following graphic. There you can see the movement function and the stop ramp again. Additionally, there is the defined maximum distance for speed filter. At this point, the drive is moving in a forbidden speed. In this case, we calculate the additional position movement the drive is making in the forbidden area. Because it didn't exceed the maximum distance, there is no reason for shutting down the torque. If the maximum distance is exceeded, as you can see there, then the drive has moved two long distances while driving in a forbidden speed. For that reason, the torque of the drive is shut down and the output status goes low because an error was detected. Let's take a look at what happens if a safe stop 1 is triggered while the process of a safe stop 2 is running. If there is a low signal on the input safe stop 1 while the process of a safe stop 2, then the output amplifier off is switched off immediately. After passing the off delay time, the outputs enable brake and enable torque are switched off. Meanwhile, the power to the drive is cut off and a mechanical brake is activated. As you can see, the SafeStop 1 always has priority before a SafeStop 2. 
Just to repeat the differences between Safe Step 1 and Safe Step 2, I want to show you a short review. Both safety functions are waiting for the stop request in Phase 1. In Phase 2, the delay time until start of the ramp parameter can be used to configure a delay time for the beginning of the stop ramp. When a safe stop is triggered, then the monitoring of the stop ramps begins. But remember, if the maximum speed is exceeded, then the system switches to phase 5. This causes the torque to be turned off. After monitoring the stop ramp, phase 3 is finished and the system goes into phase 4. While safe stop 1, the temporary standstill monitoring begins. This means that the output's amplifier off, enable brake and enable torque are going low after passing their configured delay time. While safe step 2, there is a permanent standstill monitoring where the speed and position of the drive is monitored safely. For this reason, the output's amplifier off, enable brake and enable torque remain to set 1. In case of safe step 1, the phase switch off torque starts after passing the off delay for enable torque. In case of safe step 2, phase 5 is triggered when the monitoring of the speed or position has failed. So that's it for the tutorial about the safety functions safe step 2 and safe operating stop. Now you've got to know how to configure these safety functions in the FlexiSoft designer. Additionally, you learned the biggest differences between Safe Step 1 and Safe Step 2.